At the last few minutes of the first episode of the Idol Master anime, the following question is asked to the girls at the Namuko Production Agency. The answers vary from one another, but all of them reply with their expectations regarding their profession. For Makoto Kikuchi, being an idol might bring out her feminine side. For Yukiho Hagiwara, it's a chance to become the best version of herself. Yori Minase believes it'll make people respect her. Yayoi Takatsuki wants to help her family with the money she'll make. Chihaya Kisaragi just wants to sing and nothing more. But the answer of a particular girl is quite simple. She doesn't elaborate on the purpose of that dream, nor what she desires when it comes true. It's just something she has carried since her childhood. At that moment, she considers that to be a concrete answer. It's a dream she's determined to turn into a reality. However, that's not a concrete answer. Her journey to figure out the true meaning of her dream is what made Haruka Amami become one of my favorite characters of any kind of media. And this is funny, because she wasn't even on my top 5 favorite characters from the show during the first 13 episodes. I thought she was cute, I liked her positive mindset, but I didn't see anything remarkable about Haruka that would make her stand out from the Genki archetype, a supportive, always cheerful girl, a common trope in anime. However, during the episodes of the second half, I started to realize just how much I related to Haruka. I had never felt such a strong connection to a character as I felt with her. But before we start, this video contains MASSIVE spoilers about the original Idolmaster anime. With that out of the way, let us dive into the story of Haruka Amami, why she's so important to me, and how her arc is a masterclass in character writing. In episode 5, the Namuko Pro team goes to a summer house to relax during the summer. It's the mandatory fun service beach episode of contemporary anime. Lighthearted, fun, and full of bikini shots. But what if I tell you this episode contains one of the most pivotal scenes in the show? I'm referring to the scene in which the girls are about to sleep, but some of them are still awake. They start talking about their future as idols, imagining how and where they'll be in a year. It's a scene that left an impression on me for its nocturnal ambience with almost no background music. It made me feel the atmosphere of intimacy of that moment. <laughs> Haruka comments on how this trip to the beach was fun, saying she would like to do this again in the following year. When she talks about the future, she wonders if casual trips like this with all the girls would still happen if they became famous. Yori jumps in and then tells her to think about that only after achieving fame. Haruka agrees and goes to sleep, but the shot with her eyes open tells us that this concern is still in her head, and it wouldn't leave it soon. In episode 11, when Chihaya asks her why she decided to become an idol, Haruka gives a more elaborate answer. Besides saying it's a dream of her since she was a child, she shows great enthusiasm for the idea of sharing the stage with her friends and the contagious energy that such a performance would bring her. It's a simple aspiration, yet one worthy of her. And it was about to become true, for the girls were preparing for their first big concert together. For this concert, the girls rehearsed really demanding routines. Some of them struggle, like Yukiho and Yayoi, who feel pressured by the other girl's abilities and almost quit. It's a depiction of how hard it is to be an idol. 
it requires great physical and mental conditioning. That's where peer support comes in. Support is necessary so that they don't fall apart, and the one who excels at this is Haruka. Even Yoshikawa, the journalist, acknowledges Haruka's importance to the girls. <laughs> She's the positive mind of the group, always spreading optimism to the other girls during adversities. However, not everything is a bed of roses. She can't quite follow the other girls in group singing. Besides, it's evident how this job affects her. She divides her time between work and studies, sometimes even struggling to stay awake. Still, she stays optimistic and keeps doing her best. During a scene where Haruka is practicing a song she's struggling with, Chihaya shows up and sings along to help her. Haruka always tries to help everyone, so Shihaya probably thought, now it's my time to return the favor. It's a beautiful moment, so much that the producer doesn't interrupt them when he sees them training after the studio's closing time. The relationship between these two girls is one of Idol Master's greatest charms, and this episode stands as an example of the influence they have on each other's lives. At the end of the episode, the companionship between the girls and Haruka's positivity yield results. After much training, the girls do a complete routine without mistakes for the first time. Man, I can feel perfectly their overwhelming happiness, because that's how I feel when I play an entire song on the piano without making mistakes, after a lot of practicing and messing up. It's a wonderful feeling. I even get emotional most of the time, because it shows how my efforts were worth it. Ace, Ace. In episode 13, the day of that big concert arrives and several setbacks happen, which shakes the girl's confidence. Once again, amidst despair, Haruka is the one that tries to calm everyone and keep them together, even though she's also apprehensive. Under such unsettling circumstances, it doesn't last long until some girls get desperate again, but at least she tried and didn't keep her head down. Before all that, when Haruka arrives at the music venue and sees all the distant audience seats, she says something that defines her personality. It's at that moment that one of her greatest aspirations takes shape, to bring happiness to everyone through her music. That's when I started to realize how amazing Haruka was. Following the success of this concert, the dream of all those girls has never been so close to come true, since Namuko Pro finally became famous and its idols became stars. Countless opportunities opened up for each one of them, but fame brought changes. Their lives would never be the same again, and a particular girl has some problems in dealing with changes. In episode 22, Christmas Eve is right around the corner and Haruka wants to throw a Christmas party like in the previous year. But Chihaya reminds her that the situation is different now. Their schedules are full, so it'll hardly be possible. Haruka understands this, but feels sad nonetheless. When the producer sees her like that, he sympathizes with her and decides to plan a party anyway, with the pretext that only those who have a free schedule will attend. After hearing that, Haruka gets super excited and starts calling everyone to see who can attend. 
she gets some not so good replies, especially from Ritsuko. This hits her hard, because even though she knows she must act as a professional, it's evident that she's letting her feelings take control. Haruka tells herself as if she was conforming to the situation, but deep down she really wasn't. This is one of the things that make her such a relatable character for me. I'm just like Haruka when it comes to this feeling of unity, of wanting to bring everyone together for an event, even when some people might not be interested. So, the Christmas party happens, and all of Namuko Pro is finally reunited. When Haruka is washing some dishes with Shihaya, she talks about inevitable changes, and it's evident how uncomfortable Haruka feels towards the idea that moments like this reunion won't happen again, and that they'll have to spend Christmas in other ways, perhaps with their fans. Her expression here says it all. She doesn't want that. She wants everything to stay the same, so much that she opens up a big smile on her face when Jehaya says that some things don't have to change. I'm exactly like her. I'm afraid of some changes. I want certain things to remain the same forever. That was the moment I felt an unparalleled connection with Haruka. It's in this episode that the importance of the summer house scene from episode 5 comes to light for the first time, since that moment is brought up here. I love this. That was a scene that stood out to me, and now here they are, living the future they had imagined. However, since then Haruka expressed her fear of changes. She cherishes moments like the trip to the beach and this Christmas reunion more than anyone. Nothing is more important to her. Just look at her expression when she sees all the girls together. A look that says, I don't want this to ever end. It's like she considers experiences like these to be above any professional achievements as an idol. A feeling to which I relate entirely. At the turn of the decade, I traveled with some friends. We stayed at a summer house for a week. It was the best end of year trip I've ever took. A magical moment that I never wanted to end, just like the ones Haruka cherishes so much. Mainly because I knew a reunion like that wasn't likely to happen again, since some of those friends would move abroad, and it's hard to bring everyone together these days. I just made the most out of it as I could. So here we are at episode 23, aptly titled Watashi, Japanese for I. I've had strong reactions watching anime before, be it during happy or sad moments. I've already let down and cried for a while because of a scene or after finishing a show that I loved. But I've never had such a strong reaction as I had with the end of this episode. When the accident with the producer happened, I had no reaction. Not even during that painful frame of Haruka crying. Though now I feel a lot of pain seeing it and I didn't want to include it here. But then, the preview of the next episode. The usual cheerful song at the end. Haruka with her positivity. I thought, no, 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 don't do that, don't do this to me. <laughs> then the music fades out. Haruka changes her tone of voice. And she can barely speak anymore. When the preview ended, I hurled my phone and burst into tears on my bed. 
if one day I make a top 10 list of the most subversive moments in anime, this preview will certainly be very close to the top. But the entire episode is subversive. The previous episode ends in a positive light, with Haruka looking at all the girls together, enjoying the moment, convinced that moments like that would happen again. Episode 23 begins with that positivity, and on that note, I love the expressiveness of her body movements at the beginning, they capture all of her character's essence. Haruka singing Nanaido Button in the taxi cab warms my heart so much. She's happy, always smiling. The way this episode is structured is phenomenal. The beginning makes it evident how which of the girls became a star. Ryugo Komachi's new single plays on the radio. A truck with a Takane advertisement passes by. There's a magazine article about Chihaya. And a TV is showing a commercial starring Haruka herself. After so many accomplishments, one might imagine there's no room for unhappiness, which is suggested by Haruka's attitude at the beginning. Until this is subverted throughout the episode, and we realize that fame is not analogous to happiness. Her usual smile gets hard to maintain. She wants to practice together with all the girls for the New Year's performance, but their busy schedules don't allow it. She's still committed to the habit of going to the office at the end of the day, which no one else does anymore because of their daily routines. Their lives have changed, they can't see each other frequently anymore. While the other girls adapt to this new reality, Haruka struggles a lot to accept these changes. It hurts her too much. Chihaya notices how much this upsets her friend, and even says she'll cancel one of her appointments abroad to practice with her. But Haruka doesn't accept that. She knows how important this appointment is. And there's the catch. She is completely aware of what's more important for her and for her friends in the present. But deep inside, she just can't accept these priorities. She feels they're all drifting apart from one another. She feels completely alone. Her anxiety is palpable. But she suppresses these feelings. She tries to stay positive even as they get more and more oppressive. She's living her dream of being an idol, so she feels obliged to always smile. But it's evident that she's uncomfortable with the sacrifices fame has imposed. She doesn't seek help, which worsens her situation considerably. At the end of the episode, she's on the verge of breaking down. That's why the producer's fall doesn't bother me that much. Usually I get easily bothered by forced melodrama in anime, and I must admit that the producer's accident is a bit too much. But I don't think it ruins everything this episode has masterfully built. Haruka didn't have her head in the right place already, so she wasn't paying attention to her surroundings and would break down had he fallen or not. It just made matters even worse. <laughs> It's fantastic how this show leaves no loose ends, because Haruka forcing herself to smile has been foreshadowed throughout the whole show. Every time she was visibly down, she would immediately put her hand on her head and smile again. In episode 22, Haruka sees her reflection and feels compelled to smile for what she says here. In this case, the smile comes first and foremost before even her own feelings. In episode 11, we have a dialogue between Haruka and Chihaya with some information about Haruka that's more important than we might think initially. Also in the same episode, there's some very good visual storytelling that manages to tell us a lot about those two characters with barely no words spoken. This scene shows how striking the sight of Chihaya's empty apartment full of packed boxes is to Haruka. It's almost as if she can't even fathom how can someone live like that, with such loneliness stamped all over the place. 
back to episode 23, there's this great scene that references the first episode. It uses the exact same composition as the scene in which Haruka does her daily commute to the office at the beginning of her career, when she was full of hopes for her dream. For me, the way she looks at the sky as she writes a message to try to reunite all the girls is as if she wanted to revive that old feeling that was lost in the face of the current situation. And the consequences of this episode were discussed in the aforementioned scene in the summer house from episode 5. At that moment, Haruka wondered if they would be able to get together and travel again in a year if they became famous. She was already concerned about that. Now you see why that scene is so important? From the very beginning, she treasured those moments. That's why episode 23 is so painful. It's when all of her fears converge, as evidenced here, when Haruka observes Miki, radiant as always. The bright light of a girl who is determined to build her future. A feeling to which Haruka can't relate with anymore. I think the execution of Haruka's arc is better than Chihaya's, which is the other main arc of the anime. And no, I'm not criticizing Chihaya's arc, I'd never do that. I loved it too and it made me cry a lot. The scene in which she sings Yakusoku is one of the most powerful moments in any animation I ever watched. It's when I realized Idol Master was more than your average idol anime. But the build up to her arc was predictable. Throughout the show it's clearly indicated that something will happen to Chihaya, be it through her negative reactions towards certain topics or the scenes where she rejects family calls. You know something will happen anytime soon, and you start to prepare for the worst. But the build-up of Haruka's arc is more subtle. Over the course of the series she expresses her fears and shows discomfort in some situations. But everything was portrayed organically during the episodes. Those details are not highlighted as if they would escalate later. It's only when the events of episode 23 happen that you connect all the dots and you realize how it was all premeditated. That talk about the future she had with the other girls at the summer house, her uneasiness towards Shihaya's way of living, her forced smile in situations that shake her positive mindset, her dissatisfaction regarding changes brought by fame, the negative feelings she suppresses instead of getting help. All of that culminates in this episode, which is one of the best depictions of loneliness I've ever seen in anime. What makes it so devastating is its idiosyncratic execution. It puts you in Haruka's shoes through its intimate direction, full of beautiful melancholic shots of the character and her surroundings that flawlessly convey her overwhelming feelings. The expressive animation, the color distribution, and the absence of soundtrack in several segments of the episode magnify the feeling of solitude and desolation. All of that created a personal atmosphere that made me feel absolutely everything that Haruka felt. A lot of what I said now about the technical aspects also apply to the following episode, number 24. The first minutes give me chills for its dynamic non-linear editing that shows everything that happened after the accident with the producer and the way Haruka reacted to that. It's as if she had intensified the way she suppressed her feelings, trying to adapt to the present in the worst possible way. Following her scheduled appointments, concealing undesired thoughts, just walking forward with no direction headed. It's shown that she gets the lead role on the play when competing against Miki, because the character she would play had similar feelings to her own. That was her only opportunity to express herself, to let out all that was stuck inside of her, and that made her delivery thrilling performance, since those were feelings she was still suppressing outside the stage. And man, those acting shots are spine-chilling. Her expressiveness is so overwhelming, it, it brings tears to my eyes. I 
頑張らなきゃ頑張らなきゃだよねえミュージカルの稽古を休みたい We see the consequences of this during the conversation between Ritsuko and Miki. Haruka asks Ritsuko to halt all of their activities, including her role in the play, so they can focus on practicing for the New Year's performance. They could barely practice together, which worries her, but not for the reasons you'd expect from an idol. Haruka gets worried not because the lack of practice could cause problems during the performance, but because she just wants to have fun with the girls like the old times. Doing her job doesn't make her happy if she's not with them, if she doesn't feel they're united. When Miki hears this, she gets upset and asks Haruka if she wasn't enjoying being an idol. That's when Haruka realizes she had lost her positivity, her smile. She wasn't enjoying it. There was no purpose in being an idol that way. Her breakdown has no background music. It's only her trembling voice. Which makes it much more impactful than any sad song. Haruka is someone that tries to help everybody but doesn't allow herself to be helped by others. She keeps it all to herself and the outcome of that is what happened in these episodes. But unlike Chihaya, that wouldn't have overcome her depression if not for the support of her friends, Haruka has a strong mentality. What makes her get better after her breakdown is herself. Well, <laughs> After talking with Toma from Jupiter and having a beautiful, beautiful moment with some children that recognized her on the street, she reminds herself of her own values. This is another moment that made me react in a way I never had before. The context alone would be enough to make me cry, a scene in which children ask Haruka to sing. It shows how her music is bringing happiness to the children which is what Haruka most desires to bring to others and to herself. And the song she sings is none other than Jibun Restart. As soon as I recognized the song, I immediately started crying. I wasn't ready for it, it just came at full force, the tears started falling with no build up whatsoever. I simply dropped my phone and cried, while I listened to Haruka singing alongside the children. This song is extremely symbolic, for it was the last song of their first big concert, the one they practiced hard in episode 11. It's the song they performed together after a series of adversities they managed to overcome in a performance that made me feel the energy of watching an actual live concert. This song was the one responsible for launching them into stardom. It's one of the most gratifying and satisfying moments of the anime. So choosing this song for the scene with the children was perfect. And man, <laughs> it's impossible to rewatch this scene without crying. It's, it's too beautiful for my heart. The Jupiter guy learned from the Namco Pro girls the importance of union. And with the children, Haruka saw her dream unfurling right before her eyes. Her song was bringing happiness and joy to them being the tie that binds them. It's the reason she wanted to be an idol. That's why she always keeps her positivity and a smile on her face. <laughs> Believing in her values again, she hopes that the opportunity where all the girls will be able to practice together again will come. And that is also what they want. They just couldn't think about it properly because of the amount of work that was consuming them. <laughs> All of Haruka's internal conflict is what makes it so easy to see her as a real person. 
Her breakdown certainly made the girls realize how they were drifting apart. But the fact that they were able to reunite shows how maybe Haruka only needed to wait for their schedules to realign. And maybe everything would have been solved naturally. But it is precisely that anxiety that makes everything so believable, because her feelings didn't allow her to act rationally. And what's the name of this episode? It's in this episode that Haruka's dream becomes something concrete, with a purpose, a meaning. The symbolism of her being helped by her child self is beautiful, because that's the moment in which she finally gets the answer to the question made on the first episode. Now Haruka knows exactly what it means to be an idol and why that was her dream since she was a child. In front of the venue where their first big concert took place during episode 13, Haruka is overtaken by that incredible feeling of sharing the stage with her friends and the contagious energy that the concert brought her, which is exactly what she described to be her biggest wish in episode 11. After her child self, it's time for the episode 13 Haruka to help her remember her values once and for all and how these values will make new moments like the ones from that concert possible. It was time for Haruka to restart herself. During the New Year's performance and the final episode, Haruka tells the audience Just as I mentioned previously, making everyone have fun on her shows was one of her biggest wishes, which she states in episode 13. During this performance, she makes her wish come true and makes sure everyone in the audience knows that. Having fun with the girls on stage and providing this joy to others is the ultimate fulfillment of her dream. But Haruka's journey doesn't end there. There are still many critical steps for both her personal and professional evolution. Steps for beyond the brilliant future. That's the title of the Idol Master movie. To my delight, this movie is more about Haruka than any other Namuko Pro girl. I would say that she is the only protagonist, while every other girl is a supporting character. Not that they have no relevance to the movie, but its focus is on Haruka above all. The first 50 minutes of the movie are something I could rewatch every day without ever getting bored. Because it's pure bliss. Namuko Pro will finally perform in an arena. It will be the biggest concert in the agency's history, so they take a week to practice intensively with the girls in a summer house. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Exactly, it's very similar to that moment in episode 5 that Haruka cherishes so much. When they arrive at the house and she sees all the girls gather together, she watches them with her eyes filled with gratitude. A moment that even got me emotional when I first watched it. For this performance, Namuko Pro will have trainee idols as backup dancers, so they join the practice with our already established girls. That's not an easy task, since it's a very arduous training for the beginners. Something that puts them down and makes them feel insecure. And who do you think notices something's wrong with them and sits alongside them to cheer them up? Of course it's Haruka. Always looking after everybody's happiness. But the best part is the reason for why one of the new girls, Kana Yabuki, wants to become an idol. The reason is none other than Haruka Mami herself. Kana wants to be like her, she's her biggest inspiration. This is one of the many examples of how Haruka's amazing personality impacts other people positively, be it fans or people she lives with every day. As Chihaya puts, in episode 6, Haruka gives a candy to the producer when she sees him neck deep in trouble with his workload, advising him to eat one, since it helps you to relax in situations like that. 
A year later, in episode 20, he still remembers this attitude and thanks her. In episode 21, Chihaya says that maybe an idol is someone that brings happiness to others with their songs. That's what she started to aim for, and for the most part, it was because of Haruka. At first she only wanted to sing, but had no purpose other than her brother. But she found this purpose after her experiences with Namukopuro, especially after Haruka reunited all the girls and they wrote a song to help cheer her up and get her out of depression. Look no further than this interaction between those two from episode 21. Haruka. Arigato. But the fact that Haruka is a role model to Kana is certainly the best example of that. I love the scene in which both of them are alone and she gives the new girl some advice about her troubles during practice. One step at a time and never giving up. They sound like such cliche advice. But coming from Haruka, they mean a lot. That is the power of an inspired figure. I say that for both Kana's reaction as well as mine, because the attachment I have to Haruka made me apply that mentality to my daily life. Haruka. At the end of the show, after recovering from her breakdown, Haruka starts believing in her values again, but at no point it's made clear if she's now comfortable with changes, and the movie shows that she's not. Tied to that is the fact that she doesn't think about her future. Everyone is following their own paths, she says, but she doesn't think about her own path. It's the producer that brings her future up. He talks about how the future is full of possibilities and uncertainties, but that he's excited to see what awaits him, especially now that he's about to live abroad for some time. Haruka sees the producer's hopeful gaze, and it's clear how she doesn't share the same feeling. Haruka, the Important words that stick with her. With the arena concert on the horizon, Haruka is forced to take a bigger step towards the future, as she is chosen as the leader for this performance. Even though she always supports everyone so they can give their best and keep themselves united, she never saw herself as a leader. This attitude is simply something inherent to her personality. But that's precisely the reason why the producer chose her, because there is no one else that cares so much about the girls, both individually and as a group, as Haruka. Because of the backup dancers, this ends up being an even more complex challenge, due to the disagreements that come up between them. Similar to Namuko Pro back in episode 11, some girls feel the practice is too difficult and that causes them to discuss the possibility of simplifying their routine so that everyone can be on the same level, which sparks controversy. Unlike Namuko Pro though, these girls don't yet have the same sense of unity as Haruka's group, especially due to the absence of a figure like her. What their group has is basically the opposite of Haruka on the character of Shiho Kitazawa. Stoic and unsympathetic, she's an individualist and doesn't believe that union is important for a good performance. She believes that each one is solely responsible for their own skills. I would be lying if I said that her attitude didn't annoy me, especially her arrogance towards the girls. But the industry is full of people like her, and it's important to show how Haruka acts when faced with someone that goes against her ideals. It's part of her growth. Due to all of this, something that almost happened during Namuko Pro's rehearsal in episode 11 ends up happening. 
one of the girls gives up on the performance, and that girl ends up being Kana. The fact that the girl that had her as an inspiration suddenly gave up made Haruka think that maybe the problem was in herself. But even feeling insecure, she knows that she needs to honor her position as a leader and find a solution to the problem. That's where Haruka's unique approach comes in. To Shiho, Kana giving up was the solution to the problem, because she was the one that had the most trouble. But when Haruka spoke to Kana on the phone and heard from her mouth that she didn't want to become an idol anymore, Haruka feels that the girl isn't being sincere with herself, that her attitude doesn't match her personality. She follows this intuition to solve the problem, something that she, as a person and not just as a leader, believes. This decision is opposed by Shiho, who does not believe Haruka should act based on her feelings. But Haruka shows assertiveness for the first time and believes in her values as the correct decision for the well-being of the whole group. In the aforementioned talk Haruka had with Kana over the phone, the new girl tells her the image she has of her source of inspiration. A strong person that isn't affected by anything. Someone that Kana doesn't feel she's capable of being. But that's not the reality. That's what Haruka tries to be. But it's not always possible. Her profession is way too oppressive for someone with her personality. But still, even when facing adversities, she keeps trying, never giving up, believing in her values. That's what makes Haruka go after Kana to cheer her up and not let her give up on her dreams. During the final conversation with all the girls inside the empty arena, Haruka recognizes that maybe there's a better way to deal with the Kana situation and the lack of preparation some of the beginners have. But she decided to fight for what she wants at the moment, that is keeping all of them united so they can overcome this trial together. Haruka believes she would never be where she is now if not for the people that accompanied her on her journey. Upon finishing her speech, she turns around and cries. It's clear that she was afraid of giving a speech in front of everyone, of having the final word. Shortly before she began, we see a subtle shot of her hands shaking. She has always been reluctant to act as a leader, but she gave her best. She didn't hesitate a single moment, despite her insecurities. She took her biggest step yet, and of course this shook her. But her values hit everyone positively. She took the right decision as a person. She cries for finally having taken that burden off of her. That experience as a leader made her more welcoming to changes, because she needed to overcome her insecurities and take decisions based on what the producer told her in their conversation that night. Haruka didn't want to let Kana abandon her dream in the present and regret it in the future. She didn't want to keep the backup dancers in this array in the present and let that affect their future. And more importantly, she didn't want to regret making decisions in the present that went against what she believes. That's how she builds her future with the people she lives with. <laughs> Many people say the movie spacing gets dragged when the drama is introduced, but I disagree. I think the movie takes its time to develop Haruka's internal conflict so that her feelings have more depth and become more tangible. It doesn't concern itself with rushing a solution, and for me that's how it's gotta be. 
I don't think it is a perfect movie. The execution on the drama has some points that don't sit well with me. But I think it is a worthy ending to this anime that made me feel sad for those who have prejudice against idol shows, due to the fact they'll never appreciate the fantastic work that is the Idol Master. In the first episode, one of the first things we see Haruka doing is falling, even before we're introduced to her name. This becomes frequent over the course of the show, and initially I even got a bit concerned, as I got the impression that they were going to overdo this as her defining trait. The clumsy accident prone girl. As if this wasn't already common enough in anime. But now it's clear to me that this is a metaphor. Every time Haruka falls, she gets up with a smile. It's a representation of how no fall can keep her down for long, as she always overcomes it due to her amazing mentality. This is evident in the lyrics to one of her songs, the one that best describes her, titled Start. How it begins says it all. She goes out for a walk, ends up falling, but gets up and moves on. To Haruka, I wanna try it now and I can do it now are two thoughts that sometimes don't mix, but she doesn't want to give up, even when faced with failure. That's the mentality that makes her a resilient person that always gives it her all. I relate a lot with the lyrics, especially with frustrations that I have with things such as playing the piano or on my job as a video editor. But I've always tried to keep an attitude similar to Haruka's, and now this girl motivates me to try to be just like her. I haven't felt such a strong connection to a character since Shizuku from Whisper of the Heart, a movie that completely changed my life. So I think this says a lot about the way I see Haruka. <laughs> I relate to her mentality, her values, her feelings, her yearning for happiness, everything. Her positivity and the way she deals with problems, personal or otherwise, makes her a real role model. I wanna be just like Haruka Mami. 